Hi, Kat here for Lightwave Digital. In this video, we're going to do something a little bit more interesting. And as our subject matter for today, we're going to use some of the assets from Iron Sky. Originally produced in Lightwave 10 and 11 back in 2011 and 2012 before its release, Iron Sky uh, was done largely with Lightwave as a uh, primary 3D application to do all the space battles plus the stuff that was seen over New York. In this demonstration video, what we're going to be talking about is the use of motion blur, both in production render and as well as a preview render. Here we can see one of the Valkyries, one of the um, space moon Nazi ships from the show. And we're going to do some quick animation on this, just so we can get something to fly through screen. So we'll take our parent object for the Valkyrie, and we're going to give it a flight path down to frame 120. And we're going to just change the z-axis. We can also use an envelope to do this. And we'll take that z-value and we'll move it right up so it zooms past camera, something like that. Okay, and that's, you know, okay, fine and dandy, but it's kind of boring, so we'll also do some camera animation. Now, as many of you may be aware, but if you're not, I also worked on Battlestar Galactica. And one of the things that we used to have to tell people is that, no, this was not a procedural camera thing or 3D tracking a shot that was done with a handheld camera and then trying to make that work for shots. Any of the shaky cam movement stuff was all pretty much done by hand. It was really super easy to do in Lightwave. So we'll do a little bit of that here. Okay, so we're going to start out working with some of our guides here. So we're going to show our safe areas. All right, and we're also going to show rule of thirds. This is a cinematographer, or director of cinematography rule set. If you don't want to rule of thirds, golden tragos, um, golden ratios, all that stuff, as I suggest you uh, look those up. There's some fantastic material out there that describes how these things work. And literally, if you get all access to those, and it's really easy to pull them up and they will display for you either one at a time or several depending on your selection. I like to just work with rule of thirds, especially with spaceship shots where we're going to be using that kind of camera style. So we'll start off over here. Now generally the idea being is that the crosshair here in the upper left hand portion of the frame is going to be nailed right on the subject, you know, whether it's an eye or the nose of a ship or something similar to that. And we're going to chase and follow it as it moves. We're going to just do some general keyframes initially, just to get us past the camera. And what I like to do is I like to swap from one corner to the other. Start there. Bump, bump, bump. and find some good spot right there, right on the turret cannon. And that will give us a pretty good look there before it starts to turn. But we need a little bit of camera rotation and a little bit of keyframes in between just to help us out here. So I think what we'll do is we'll scan across to get to that point. So we're starting dead on into it, so it's boom, boom. We find it. Do a little bit of a search. And go down another keyframe. Do a little bit of a search again. So we're not totally rock solid on it. Do a little bit of a bump with the camera for angle. And to do that, I'm just using my right mouse button and Dragging the mouse left and right, give it that angle bump. Give it a little bit of a, a rock there. And give it more of a rock here just before. And we'll do one more in here. Before we're totally out of frame. And we'll point down so that we kind of lose it off camera. All right, so let's take a look at what this looks like with preview. All right, so playing back 24 frames per second. 
It's not too bad. It's not perfect, obviously, but it gets the action and motion across. Now, we have a pretty good idea what this motion blur is going to look like uh, in camera. It's going to look like it's flying past camera. It's got like some um, definitive in-camera motion blur. But what if we want to simulate that as part of our OpenGL render? Lightwave has the ability to do that in any of its display modes, including VPR. Although the display mode for VPR is effectively the production renderer. And we'll get into that in a second. But let's say we want to say wireframe is going to be our previs mode. And we want to see what that looks like with motion blur. So by hitting D, we've got the ability to set a depth of field and motion blur preview passes. And this is dependent on this function being enabled here, DOF motion blur. And it's found just right next to the render t value type. So you got bounding box wireframes, vertices, front face wireframe, shaded solid, shaded texture, shaded texture wireframe, VPR. It's this just down arrow right here. So we're going to turn that on. Now, there is a little bit of a performance hit with this, but it'll give us a pretty accurate representation of what will go on in render. So let's take a look at what this will look like with those four motion blur previews on. Can we see that there's a little bit more motion blur present? Let's go to the extremes. See, we want to come down to a frame in here. You can see that the interface is slowing down a little bit because we're effectively doing a motion blur preview inside of the OpenGL view. But it's still fully functional. We can you know, walk through it very easily and we get a really, really nice looking result with nine motion blur passes. If we want to go excessive and go to 20, this will be really sluggish. The default is typically nine. For some cases, I usually go down to five, and it works just just well, just as well. So let's take a look at that in preview mode. And it'll give you an idea of how things will look and render without actually having to go and punch it up and enable VPR or render it as a production renderer over the network or an F10 sequence. So that's pretty good. Okay. So let's talk about what the motion blur settings are here in camera. We're going to turn the preview off because we want this to be a snappy response for the interface. And we'll go to a part where it should be mostly blurred or blur ish. Okay. And we have motion blur enabled. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn VPR on. And we will see that the render is taking care of motion blur at the same time. Now, the different values that you can punch in here are uh, very similar to how a real camera works with shutter speed, the efficiency. You can match rolling shutters. And of course, how many subframe steps do you want to have Lightwave evaluate per frame? Of course, the more subframe value steps, the longer the render, the less subframes, the shorter the render. Of course, sacrificing or improving quality depending which way you go. Now, interesting about Lightwave is that you can actually do minus directional blurs. See how things shifted there? And you don't necessarily have to keep it below zero or uh, or above 100 or you know, below 50. You can go to extremes. Let's go 500%. Of course, this will come into cost of render quality, but if you throw more minimum samples, which will impact the quality of the motion blur or depth of field render contribution, and you can get that to clean up pretty quickly. Of course, dropping the amount of subframes or increasing it depends on how much steppiness you want in there. 
but you can do really, really cool things with motion blur. Um, there are a lot of tricks that we used to use on shows like Galactica and Stargate and Atlantis and, of course, Iron Sky, um, Serenity, anything that Lightwave is used on, uh, where we would use these simple properties of a motion blur camera to do everything from tracers, um, faking radiosity with lights that would um, move in between frames uh, just by a few degrees. All kinds of wonderful tricks. But because it is behaving like a real camera and we're trying to go for something that is more or less a real camera, we generally keep it in the range of like 38 to 50 and the default just to make sure that we have the proper amount of quality there. And of course, the minimum maximum samples for what we need in the scene to make sure that it's nice and clean and the render is sweet. Now, we also have depth of field in here. Don't necessarily need depth of field on this particular shot, so if I turn it off, I'm going to get a render boost in terms of uh, performance. But we can combine, we can turn motion blur off and turn depth of field on and turn this to an extreme. And this is also previewable in any of the modes. So you can get an idea of what your depth of field is going to be like before you even think about rendering it. Very cool stuff. All right, we'll see you again in the next video.